Today we're going to be looking at, I quit going to church. Now you know what the problem with this message is? The people that have quit going to church aren't here to hear it. So how do we get the message to them? Well, there's a number of ways, but maybe I'm speaking to you. Maybe I'm speaking to you in the lack of your faithfulness to the church. What's the guarantee that five years down the road, you're not going to quit going to church? What is it we need to be doing now to equip us to be in the fellowship of other believers? If you have your Bibles, let's read. Starting with verse 12 of Psalms 92. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. This passage has spoken to me like it's never spoken before. There's a lot in this passage. May God add his blessings to the reading, the proclamation, the understanding of his holy and blessed word. <clears throat> a seed, a seed cannot grow to its potential unless it is planted. She's just throwing a seed on top of the soil, on top of the dirt, really won't get the job done. And it might sprout, it might do a little, but it cannot grow to its potential until it gets down in that soil. I make that analogy because that's what the psalmist is saying here. And when I read this, I'm reminded that as followers of Jesus Christ, we really cannot grow to our potential until we are planted, until we're planted in the church. I'm not talking just about attending. It goes beyond that. We can attend. We can just be surface seeds having a surface relationship with the church. But until we get into the soil, we're not going to grow like we need to or like we should. You see, people who are planted flourish. That's what verse 12 tells us. People that are planted flourish. A palm tree, interestingly enough, I don't know that I knew, knew this, okay? Okay. There's a phone call from God coming in. A palm tree can flourish in all types of conditions. Hot, cold, in the dry desert. Did you know that a palm tree can even flourish during hurricanes? Now, palm trees are known for their flexibility. And after I came across this information, I thought, you know, that's, that's, I guess that's true. I hadn't really thought about it. But when I did a little bit of searching about palm trees, I realized that they are very durable. There's a lot of flexibility. During a hurricane, a palm tree can, can bend even to the ground, come right straight back up, and be just as strong, if not stronger, than it was before. After a storm... The palm tree straightens up, but it bent and was made stronger. It continues to flourish even after the storm. Now, the point is, each of us as followers of Christ, each of us as believers who are planted in the house of the Lord, we can flourish during all seasons of our lives. And we've got the good. And we've got the bad. There's a lot of seasons that come into our lives. Those palm trees can bend. But they do not break. See I believe that if we are rooted and grounded. In the word. In the house of the Lord. We may bend. But we will not break. But that's not true. If we're not grounded in the word and in the house of the Lord. You see, over the years, I could make, I sat at my desk 
the other morning and wee morning hours of the night thinking about different families I've known over the years. They've gone through some very difficult and turbulent times. They've had some unexpected trials and tribulations and a lot of pain and suffering in their life. They've had losses that they'll never, ever really get over. But I look at those lives, I look at those families, and I see that even through all of those seasons of life, they flourish, as the Scripture says. They flourish because they were planted. They weren't just thrown on top of the soil. Sometimes that's what we're like. We don't really get into God's Word. We, we just go through the motions. I use that term a lot. We go through the motions. And because we're not really grounded, we can't withstand all of those difficult times. See, I've seen those people that they didn't give up on God. They didn't give up on the church. They didn't give up on the promises of God's Word. Even though they could have. But because they were deeply planted, they may have bent, but they did not break. And then I think of other people over the years that have gone through the same type situations, but they weren't planted. And as a result, they had nothing to sustain them. They had nothing to provide that strength and stability and that nutrition. See, those were the ones that bent. They broke. They took a licking, and they couldn't keep on ticking. What makes the difference between individuals and families that go through so much? Two different families. One remains strong. Don't turn away from God. Don't turn away from the fellowship of believers. Don't turn away from His Word. Then others that get bitter. Resentful, mad at God. There's a reason why we have those two polarities. James, in his book, the first chapter, verse 12, said, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trials, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And I may be getting into another point right now. But if we really love him, as James is telling him, we're going to get in the word. We're going to get in his house. And that leads me to the second point. People who are planted grow. And we can't flourish until we're planted. We really can't grow until we're planted. And again, verse 12 accentuates that same point. A Lebanon cedar tree. I've actually laid eyes on a Lebanon cedar tree. Right there in the Holy Land. But I did not know that they can grow as tall as 130 feet. That's a huge tree. 130 feet. It also takes some 40 to 70 years for them to grow as much as 60 feet. And in order for them to grow to their potential, the Lebanon cedar, it can take a hundred years. So what I'm saying is the growth continues. They don't get to be 60, 80 feet and then stop growing. They keep on growing till they reach their potential. We too need to keep on growing. But the only way that we as Christians can keep on growing is to be planted. The one of the qualities of a planted follower is that continue to grow. Now the key word there in that statement is continue. We don't just grow to a certain point and say, got all of that religious stuff I need. I got all that church stuff. Got all that hearing milkweed as much as I want to hear. Got enough. I don't need any more. I don't need to get in Sunday school. I don't need to get in God's word. So we stop growing. I think what we see here with what the psalmist is saying, the Lebanon cedars continue to grow. You see, we can attend church for years on end and still 
never grow. You know, when I get with other preachers, we like to compare notes. I did that two weeks ago in Columbus, Ohio, at that pastor's conference. We compare notes. We talk about, well, these are the great things that are happening in my church. Well, these are the things I wish would happen in my church, maybe happen in somebody else's. We begin to compare notes. Say, why is, why is it happening there, not happening here? Or why are we doing this? And they can't be able to do that here. So we, we talk things out. Just see what's working for some and how it can work for everyone else. But the bottom line is, if we're not growing continuously, then we're not where God wants us to be. See, if we're growing continuously, then people are able to see a change. If we're not, then people will not be able to see a change. Your everyday life. Go to the meetings you have to go to. Go out there in the community and do the things that you have to do. Go to the beauty shop. Go to the barber shop. Go to the restaurant. Whatever. You're down the road. Two years down the road. Five years down the road. There's no change. That person is just exactly the way they were five, ten years ago. There's no kind of spiritual growth in their lives. They're using the same language now that they used five years ago, and they keep going to church. Well, their behavior, their thought pattern, things they do hadn't changed. So, see, we can go through the motions if we are that seed that's thrown on the ground. But when we are planted, we make a difference. And people see that difference. Then they'll be able to say things, you know, He's just a different person. I talked to so-and-so at the store the other day. He's not the same person he was a few years ago. He just seems to love more and be more kind. Or she just seems to have something that she didn't have a few years ago. What makes the difference? What makes the difference is whether or not you are planted or whether you're just thrown on the surface, hit and miss, when it comes to being a part of the fellowship. We also see that people who are planted produce fruit. How do you gauge what you're doing at work? Text somebody the other day. Said, you know, I've had a busy day, but I don't think I accomplished anything. Sometimes it's that way. Work all day long. Go to bed at night and say, what did I accomplish today? There's all this running around, zipping and ripping all over the place. Really didn't accomplish anything. See, I want to be able to produce something. You do too. You know, if you're really growing, you're going to be producing. But if you're not planted, you're not growing, and therefore you're not producing. And verse 14 actually emphasizes that point, and I won't read, read it. You may want to flash that up on the screen, Linda, if you have that available, just so you can make reference to it. See, people who are planted don't just attend church. It, it goes much deeper than that. They have to be fruitful. Well, let me just ask you. You'll have to answer for yourselves. What kind of fruit are you producing right now with your life, with your witness? With your love, are you the same right now that you were five years ago, ten years ago? Maybe even last week. See, I want to believe that I'm better today in striving to be more like Christ today than I was last week at this time. And next week, I want to be at a greater point because I'm growing, because I'm, I'm planted than I am right now. See, I want us to be able to make a difference for the kingdom of God. We can only do that when we're planted. In fact, Jesus said, as John records it in the 15th chapter of his gospel, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciple. So people who are planted also stay fresh, according to what we saw there in verse 14. In other words, if I could paraphrase that, I might use the, the terminology, they stay on fire for God. They stay on fire for the Lord. 
Now, now what's worse than being dried up and stale? Unproductive? Rusty? No kind of zeal or motivation? What's to go around bragging about being lukewarm? Well, the Lord had something to say about that in the book of Revelation, didn't he? So I don't believe God called any of us to be dry and stale and lukewarm. He wants us to grow. But the only way, the only way you're going to grow the way God wants you to grow, I'm speaking to myself here, is just to be planted. To be planted in the church. To be planted in God's word. God's ex God expects us to be different. God expects us to make a difference in our world for the cause of the kingdom. John Wesley, the father of Methodism, said, Catch on fire with enthusiasm, and people will come from miles away to watch you burn. That's true. I remember when I first came here. I guess right at 27 years ago, and safely say 25, 26 years ago. It seemed like there were so many places around here that burned. Remember that? Right around here. A.G. Road. It seemed like every Saturday night there was a fire on A.G. Road. What people want to do? Get in the car and run to it. I remember being out here one Saturday night. And people came out here thinking that the fire was here. See, when there's a fire, people like to they want to catch it. They, they want to see what it's all about. If you're on fire for the Lord... And your life is a witness for the Lord. People are going to come from miles away to see what's happening. Why are you on fire for the Lord? So how can we know we're on fire? Or how can we stay on fire for the Lord? Be planted. Be planted in the house of the Lord. And then we also see people who are planted love what the Lord loves. What does the Lord love? Well, we certainly know that the Lord loves the church. We certainly know that he loved the church so much that he had such a passion for the church, for the bride of Christ. In Matthew, the 21st chapter, we find these words. And I'll just paraphrase this. Remember when he went into the temple? And people were buying and selling. And he turned the table over of the money changers. And he says, this is to be a house of prayer. But you have turned it into a den of thieves. Is this a house of prayer? Is this what it is supposed to be? See, if we really love the Lord, then we're going to grow. But if we love the Lord... Then we're going to love the things that he loves. And we could take this on a different avenue and hate the things that God hates. And we could say a whole lot about that and probably will during this series. See, Christ loved the church so much that he focused on building the church. Remember the 16th chapter of Matthew, verse 18? He looked at Peter and says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this rock of faith, I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So see, there are some keys to being planted. I just want you to ask yourself, am I planted? Am I planted where God wants me to be planted? Am I planted in such a way? Am I planted in such a fashion that I'm going to grow? See, if you're planted, I'm convinced that you're going to be committed to the church. You're going to flourish. You'll flourish in worship. There'll be that desire to come and to be a part of the worship experience. You're going to flourish because you're into God's Word, studying God's Word. And the more you study, the more deeply rooted you become. And you see the Word of God as being your foundation, foundation in your life, foundation in your home, foundation in your marriage. And boy, hasn't that taken a turn this week? You know, I never thought... That that would come about so quickly. On the same sex marriage deal. I saw it coming down the road. But I never thought the Supreme Court. Would make a unanimous decision. For the entire country. I really thought that was going to be a state by state thing. 
I, I got floored when I got that email the other day talking about that. Had a wedding yesterday. Beautiful couple. What, what's it going to be like down the road? See, if we're not grounded in God's Word. And if you don't believe God's Word, you're not going to be grounded in it. And we're a society right now that's not believing God's Word. We're becoming the minority. Not in God's Word. So I believe the reason we're here is because we believe that this really is the Word of God. It's my principle. It's my guideline. It's, it's my map. But society as a whole doesn't see it that way. You're also going to be engaged in daily prayer. If you really want to be rooted, you've got to have that daily prayer. You've got to get into Bible study, your own personal Bible study. And by that, I mean that you have to take the responsibility to grow spiritually. I've told you this a thousand times. If you think that you can get enough here on a Sunday morning by what I give you in the 30 minutes that I have, and that's going to carry you out for the rest of the week, i got news for you. You're going to be sadly disappointed. Because it takes more than that. It takes that daily discipline of getting into God's Word, communicating with Him, and living out His Word. I believe you're also going to have an interest in serving in ministry. I see a lot of people here in our church that involved in different types of ministry. We have people that dedicate themselves to meeting the needs and, and, and the REACH program, Operation Christmas Child. Got the WMU. have got so many ministry opportunities that one of us can be a part of. That's part of being planted. Now, in closing, let me ask you. Have you become a member of the Quitters Club? The Quitters Club. I think you probably know what that might be like. It's really one of the largest organizations that we have in our country. Maybe even the world. Now, you may not have heard of them. And if you have not heard of them, it may be because you've never met anybody that was a member of that because they started going and guess what? They quit. They started paying their dues. That didn't last very long. They quit. See, I'm afraid that far too many of us find ourselves as a part of that quitters club. Those people are the ones that are comprised uh, of uh, individuals that, that face, face the tough times in life, face the tough time in their finances, face the tough time in their marriages, in their health. They look at their lives and maybe see themselves as a failure. So what do they do? They just quit. The get up and go, got up and went. Got up and quit. I wonder what our church is going to be like. I think about this a lot. Probably one of the things I think about more than anything else. What's our church going to be like in five years? What's it going to be like in 25 years if the Lord doesn't come back? What's ministry opportunity going to be like? How are we going to be perceived by society in 25 years? I can remember when the church was one of the most respected organizations around. I don't see that like it was. And we're in an atmosphere, in an area here, where maybe we don't see it as much as we do in the bigger cities. But it's coming our way. And the more relaxed we are, and the less planted we are in the church, the more vulnerable we're going to be to the teachings that are contrary to God's Word. You see, this quitter's business can be a part of any church. I think back over the years, I've been around here, there's been people started in strong, boy, they rolled up their sleeves, they were so excited. Where are they now? Where are they now? Looks like to me some of them quit. I'm not going anywhere. They just quit. So what kind of assurance do you have for yourself that you're not going to be a quitter when it comes to the church?
and being a part of the church and a part of God's work. We've got to take a stand. And you know when we stand and sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus? You know, that goes far deeper than just standing up in a, in a song. You've got to stand up for what Jesus believed, what he taught, what his word teaches. Stand up for what we believe. Because if we don't stand for something, guess what? We fall for anything. Don't be a quitter. Plant yourself where God wants you and be what God wants you to be. Let's pray. My blessing for each of you is this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. What does a godly father look like? Well, I want to uh, show you a picture of someone. Uh, might be two or three pictures. Anybody have any idea who that good-looking man is? <laughs>